Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. We are on day three of classroom setup. So if you haven't already watched my days one and two, make sure to go check that out first so you get an update on my progress so far. It's been really busy. I moved my whole classroom, did a lot of organization and even some arranging of furniture. Today I'm really excited because I'm going to move on to some of the decorating. So my main goal for today is to get my bulletin boards done, start to put up some of the posters and name tags and things like that, really starting to add some color and some life to the classroom. At the end of my last video, I was definitely feeling the weight and the stress that is coming with set up during a pandemic. So today I'm gonna focus on some of the things that make me happiest about my classroom so that I can really brighten my spirit up and feel renewed and refreshed. Anyway, we're going to get right into it. So I'm gonna head down, grab some black bulletin board paper because I am planning on doing two black bulletin boards at the back of my classroom and we're gonna get started right away. All right, I'm gonna start with this bulletin board behind me. So I have black bulletin board paper we just have rolls of this at our school and this works perfectly for me rather than going out and buying something different. I really like the way this works. So I have kind of a method to doing this that I've learned over the years. One is to start with it in a roll instead of trying to manage with a huge sheet of paper. Starting with it in a roll already will help you to just focus on one part at a time and then you roll it out as you're ready. I also recommend having push pins because trying to staple it and do it properly the first time is really difficult. Difficult, whereas just stabbing it with a push pin to keep it up for the time being is great. Once I have it all set up, then I come back with the stapler to make it more permanent. So you will need a stapler, of course. I just use a regular stapler, nothing fancy. And then a Zacto knife. And I tried using scissors for a long time and it just doesn't work as well as a sharp knife does. So I prefer using this. You can use scissors, absolutely, but this is really efficient. All right, so I'll show you how I go about putting up my bulletin boards. left because the paper doesn't reach all the way down so I just go back in and do another little section along the bottom to make sure it's all covered in black. bulletin board borders scattered all around me because I'm having a really hard time picking. Like I said before, last year in my classroom I only had one bulletin board, so it was like always to display my kids' art, so I just picked my favorite border, put it up, and this year I'm like, okay, I kind of want them to coordinate, so I need to find borders that complement each other and work together, but I don't want to do the same borders on every bulletin board because I want to mix it up a little bit. So it's been a really hard decision, but I'm going to show you what I decided. So for one of my back bulletin boards, I'm going to put this cute little kind of rustic pencil pattern. And I'm guessing that then I will try to coordinate some sort of language arts or writing bulletin board. 
um, where we put things back there that have to do with writing just because it has the pencil there I think that's cute <laughs> plus I was also thinking I have this banner to go up somewhere in the classroom so they're not the exact same but it'll kind of like pull from the bulletin board border and the banner and they'll complement each other really well so then from the same collection I have this bulletin board border it's not my favorite because it's a little bit darker but it matches really well with the other so I feel like because those bulletin boards are really close to one another I should pick the same colors so I'm probably gonna go with this but we'll see Alright you guys, my bulletin boards are complete, or at least my back ones, I still have one more to do up front. This is what they look like, I'm really pleased, I like that they complement each other, they're the same shape, same color, and I like that this one could be used for writing, or anything of that regard, because I will use it for that purpose, and then this one has a little bit more kind of freedom, and I can choose what to use it for, depending on our needs. Hey guys, I'm just taking a little bit of a break before I tackle my third bulletin board. While I love doing them, they are a lot of work, but I'm really happy with how they turned out, so that's giving me some motivation to push through. But I was just reading some comments from my last video, and I wanna do a quick shout out. I wanna say hi to Ryan if you are watching. I wanna thank you so much for your sweet comment that you just left on my last video. Ryan is a student right now, but he has aspirations to be a teacher one day, and he took the time to offer some support and encouragement and ask some really good questions. So thank you so much for being here, Ryan, and for your support. It really put a smile on my face to read your comment, and I always love reading your comments. So if you have any questions or anything you'd like to say, please write it in the comments below because I love going through those and hearing your ideas, meeting you, and having this community here on YouTube. All right, guys, I was going to do white for this bulletin board, but I just changed my mind because it's right next to you whiteboards and smart boards and I really think the white would just blend in rather than pop. So I'm also gonna do black on this one too. I just did basic colored stripes because I have an idea for like a welcome board 
as this bulletin board for the month of September and that theme will fit with this really well. So I thought it was just generic and universal and it would just match with whatever I needed it to. All right, I always like to use these black borders on my whiteboards just to divide spaces, just spice them up a little bit. I usually use scotch tape and just tape them on so that they stay on for the year, but I thought this year I would try using magnets, so I got these little stick-on magnets. I'm gonna try this. I'm worried that the kids will move them or I will move them and they'll just bother me, but the worst thing that can happen is that eventually I'll scotch tape them up there. So I'm gonna try this for starters. right size for my whiteboard and then taped them together and then laminated them so this isn't the actual size that a bulletin board border comes in but I made them so that they are perfect for the whiteboard so that's a really neat tip if you want something to fit then cut it to the right size before laminating then when you laminate it it's permanently the right size that you need I always put my schedule along one edge of the whiteboard, so I'll probably use this side this year because it's closest to the door and my desk so we can all see it really clearly. So I'm going to split it up about here. All right, I'm really frustrated. Like I just said, I cut them, but of course I cut them to match my whiteboard last year and I just assumed all of the whiteboards in the school were the same size, but apparently my one last year was just a little bit smaller than this year. And close enough for me really isn't good enough. That's gonna bother me forever. I'm kind of a perfectionist like that. So I'm going to need to get some new black bulletin boards and resize them to fit my whiteboards. Little bump in the road, but we're okay. <laughs> all right, I wanna start putting some things up on my wall to brighten things up. So I have these words that I got from the Target dollar spot two years ago now. So I have read, write, learn, explore, and create. And I've just been spending some time putting some tape circles on. Not totally sure our walls were just painted, so I'm not exactly sure what's going to stick to them yet. And I also, of course, don't want to wreck the paint. So I'm thinking perhaps masking tape because I have had success with masking tape before. And then also perhaps push pins in some of the letters that are circular just to help secure it. So we'll see how this goes. my alphabet I always put a cursive alphabet up because I try to focus on cursive at least at some point throughout the school year so I'm gonna put it up there this is always a challenge for me because I'm a perfectionist so I like it to be even and straight and so sometimes I have to redo it so bear with me but let's see if we can get this done today I think I'm just tired and I need to go home get some food and get some rest but I'm also just watching that alphabet fall off the wall and that is very frustrating <laughs> anyway it's okay this is day three complete 
Really, my biggest accomplishment of the day was the bulletin boards, and I badly wanted to get those done, so I'm feeling really good about that. I didn't film it, but I also did some laminating, so I'm gonna take that home, cut that out. I know I need to get command strips now, so I feel like I can go grab a bunch of those, and then I won't go through the tape catastrophe of trying to get everything else up onto my wall, and I can just find a way that's going to work from the start. My only frustration with that, or like my main frustration with that, is just that it is expensive to use command strips for everything. You guys, one of the whole strips just fell off the wall, so. I think I'm leaving at the right time. So anyway, the way that it works in my district is that everyone's back at school tomorrow. So that is all staff, teachers, student aides, custodians, administrative assistants, everybody's back for something that we call Faith Day. And so we have a guest speaker tomorrow. It is happening virtually. So my entire staff is gathering like spread out in our gym and other staffs within the district will be doing the same sort of thing. Anyway. <laughs> I feel like I keep leaving you on a negative note because it's just a little bit frustrating. Today, I wasn't frustrated because of COVID though. Today was this space and I think it's just because I got used to being out in the portable and I was out there for two years in a row. And so setting up was a breeze. It was like I knew the measurements of everything and where things fit best and how I wanted to set it up. And then like I said, this is a brand new classroom. I haven't been in a classroom like this before. So I find myself just constantly looking around and not knowing what is best. And then I get that like lump in my throat and I feel like I'm being a little bit complainy because I should just be grateful that I have a classroom to teach in. Anyway, I'm just being real with you as I'm going through the struggles that I'm going through right now, trying to set up and get ready. But I am trying to keep my mind on the bigger picture and that is the kids next week and getting back into the routine of school and being able to do it in person. Anyways guys, that is it for me today and I will catch back up with you again tomorrow. Good morning guys, welcome to day four of classroom setup, which is actually my very first day back at school. So like I mentioned yesterday, at my school we start with faith day so everyone is here and we are going to be meeting in the gym so i'm busy with that for most of the day then i have a few things that i want to get done before i go home so i will be checking in with you throughout the day let you know what my day looks like and then of course take you through what i do in my classroom later on today to finish setting up some of the things that i didn't get done yesterday. I will let you know everything that I put up on my wall fell down overnight so luckily yesterday on my way home I picked up some command poster strips so I'm going to try using those today and put everything up on the wall and then leave it again for a night and come back tomorrow and hopefully everything will have stuck properly because that was something that was holding me back yesterday. I felt like I was kind of having a bad day because nothing was working out for me. But I'm really happy that I ran into these challenges early on because it's okay that everything fell off my wall last night because I have today to fix it. And it was okay that my bulletin board borders didn't fit on my whiteboard because I went home and I cut them out last night and they're ready for today. So it's always better to run into the challenges early rather than the night before school starts. So starting refresh today, feeling a little bit better and I think I'm going to be able to get a lot done. So I'm happy to have you along with me. Anyway, I am going to be heading down to the gym to connect with everyone before we get started for the morning, and I will let you know how that goes later on. Hey guys. So, um, just got out of meetings, and then I went home, so it's the same day, I'm just in a different outfit. Really good day. Um, we didn't have any time in our classrooms, but I already knew that was going to happen, so that's okay. Um, I have some time set aside this evening for that, but I felt like today was kind of inspirational. It was like what I needed to kind of press through the challenges that I've had the past couple days. I know you would have now watched yesterday's footage, and yesterday was like a bit of a fail, in my opinion. It was like everything I wanted to do wasn't working out, and I think I spent eight hours here total, and I legitimately feel like I accomplished like one thing. I got my bulletin boards up, the paper and the border. I didn't even like theme them or put titles on them or anything. And that is really all I accomplished. So I got really frustrated yesterday. And one of the quotes that the speaker told us today in our session, he was speaking to us like virtually, it was a pre-recorded kind of thing. Anyway, he said, we can get bitter or we can get better. And I felt like that resonated with me because the other day I legitimately said to you guys, I'm feeling really bitter and <laughs> I have been feeling really bitter. So the fact that he used that exact word, I was like, 
you know how I'm feeling right now. You're on to me here. So I'm gonna try to use that the next couple of days and really flip that. I have been bitter, but I need to flip that and I need to be better. And so I'm really looking forward to having the kids here and that needs to be my focus instead of all of these barriers and all of these obstacles that seem to be in my way. And they're in my way because I put them in my way. So I need to just push that aside, do what I can, and that will be good enough. If you are struggling like I am, hopefully that phrase will help you to get better instead of bitter over the next couple of days as you're challenged to get your classroom ready and get through the first little bit of school, whatever that looks like for you. I know I'm very fortunate in that school is going to look very much the same for me. There's no rules and there's no expectations, but I get my kids and I'm in a classroom and I know that I'm so lucky and I'm sure some of you who are online teaching or have had your whole teaching world flipped upside down are probably watching me saying like, she needs to know that she's very lucky and please understand that I am. I'm also just being very honest with you and letting you know how I feel when I feel it. Knowing that I didn't get very much done yesterday, I spent a ton of time making a to-do list um, at a break in the presentation today and I came up with a lot of stuff and so now I really feel like purposeful about some of the things that I can get done and like I told you this morning I did cut out some laminating and things like that so I feel ready to kind of put some more things up on the wall since as I told you before everything I did put up fell down anyway <laughs> We are going to refocus. I'm hoping I can keep motivated and energized and be here for a couple of hours and really tackle some things that didn't work for me yesterday. Day four of classroom setup commences now. It is 3.51, so I've got lots of time to be in my classroom this evening and just really focus on what I need to get done. I have my to-do list to keep me going and we'll see where we get by the end of the evening. So let's get at it. you would have seen that or at least heard because I know I told you that my whole entire alphabet fell off of the wall so I stopped at Walmart last night and got command strips I got the poster strips because I know that I'll be able to peel this off enough to reach it underneath I really like the velcro strips but they are more expensive for like a fewer amount of them and I have a lot of stuff that I want to hang up so I really want to try the poster strips but I want to be mindful of taking care of the walls of my classroom as well so unfortunately I have to do the tedious task of taking off all the masking tape but anyway you live and you learn so I'm going to take the masking tape off put the poster strips on and then try again So um, this bulletin board I told you yesterday I think I want to use for language arts, writing, reading, things like that. And so that's why I really like the pencils around the outside. But I also have this super cute banner. If you look, it's kind of like lined paper. So today I kind of came up with the idea of putting right on on it, but spelling right like W-R-I-T-E because I just like that play on words and I think it's kind of cute. I don't really want to give it a title that's really permanent because we actually just got told that we have to teach according to the scope and sequence of Alberta education. And so I don't even know what unit I'm teaching first yet. So I really need to be flexible with what I put up on my walls. So I thought if I put right on, it's cute and it works. It lets me hang up this banner that I really like and I can just use it for whichever unit I need to start off with. So I'm just going to, these are whiteboards actually, I got these at Michael's and they are like a whiteboard surface, but I want it to be kind of permanent. So I'm just going to use little letters that I got at the Dollar Tree and probably glue them on here and then stick it up. Thank you. 
All right, guys, I had a little problem with storage on my phone, so I fixed it, and I just wanna show you a couple things that I've gotten done in the meantime. Okay, so first things first, I put my maps up on the wall, and at first I was going to center them with the whiteboard because I thought that that would look best, but then I was thinking they would be way too high up, and even the Canada map is kind of at perfect height for me, and most of my students are shorter than me, so I figured I should put them a little bit lower so that they're more interactive and the kids can actually use them. So like I said, I will be writing Canada up there and world right there with the letters that I'm going to cut out this evening. And then I finally got my alphabet up. So I did end up using those command poster strips. They worked really well and hopefully they will stay up and I won't have any more issues. I love the color up there and I just like the way it looks right in front of the class. All right, next up, I'm going to do a couple things in my teacher area. This is gifted to me from one of my friends in university when I first became a teacher. So I always put this up. And then because I decided to put my desk over here, I don't have any bulletin board space. So I just use these cork boards and put these up. And that way, anything that kids make me or give me, I can still put up. And then I bought this from the Target Dollar Spot a couple years ago. So I will put this up as well, also to hang anything that I need to hang so that I can use this wall space for what I need. Here's a close up of what my space looks like for now. I won't show you my desk area because it's still a disaster, but at least my wall has something up there for me. All right, guys, I have been here for a few hours. Of course, I've run into a lot more problems, but that's okay. I actually am feeling better. I've gotten a couple things done that were weighing on me, so it's okay. But I am just gonna give you a quick tour before I leave today because I would imagine at this point I have enough footage for a relatively long video, so I will probably cut it here. But before I end today's video, I just wanna give you a tour and let you know of some of my projects that I plan on tackling in my next couple of days, and of course, my next couple of videos. All right, so my desk area is still a major disaster, so I obviously need to do some organization there, but that is okay, that was kind of expected. Um, because of COVID, I believe I'm going to take this home because most of this stuff my kids can't use. I often just allow them to use it during like indoor recess times anyway, so I think I will just be taking that whole thing home so it won't take up very much space. Over here on this bulletin board, I have such a cute idea. I really want to do popsicles and have like, thanks for popping in, so I got paint chips for that. So stay tuned because I will film how I end up making those. I'm gonna cut out my letters when I get home for Canada and the world. Finally, my alphabet is up and looking really good. And over on this side of my whiteboard, I'm going to end up doing place value so that I have something language arts related on one side and then something math related on this side. I'm really happy with my bulletin board borders being the right size, thank the Lord. And then I have a spot over there to write their homework assignments and the daily announcements. And then of course, over over there we keep our schedule and I also have this little black pouch for whiteboard markers. The shelves are all here ready to go as well as the do it hang bins. Don't mind the mess as we go here guys, I promise it will be gone soon. I haven't totally decided what I'm going to do in this space. I'm debating putting chart paper up on the wall. One of my teacher friends had an idea to use command hooks and put them up on the wall and then hang your chart paper from that instead of needing to use a stand. So that's a possibility. I'm gonna get rid of this bookshelf. I thought I was gonna use it, but it is just too chunky. Like it doesn't go against the wall. 
and that's driving me a little bit crazy. So I think I'm just gonna get rid of it. Um, these bookshelves I always use for picture books. Here's the chart paper stand, guys. You can see how like chunky it is. Just takes up so much space and space is such a valuable thing this year that that makes me really nervous. So then same as those things I showed you by the door, a lot of these things aren't going to be able to be used this year. So I'm just gonna pack them up, bring them home and use this for books instead. I know it's hard to see. I'm sorry, I'm doing my best. This corner is going to be my group table. Thank you to those of you who gave me feedback, but I was thinking of moving this over here and I believe I am going to go through with that. I have my writing board. This whiteboard here is going to be for group work. I might put a border up or like some paper fans or something to decorate it because I don't love that it's just plain white. This one I imagine I will leave for like the French teacher or the music teacher and just try to not use it myself so that they have usable space because often when they come in to teach, my whiteboards are already packed with stuff. So that will be great for them. And then this, I believe I'm going to hang string or something and clothespins where they can pin up art projects that we do so that I have a place to display their things. And then over here we have the iPad cart. Not sure if I'm gonna use iPads or Chromebooks this year, but that's okay. And then lockers are a bit of a concern right now. I only have this many. Kids can't share. And so I have heard that we are getting new lockers, but that won't be till later in September. Anyway, still a disaster zone in here, but guys, we are making progress. <laughs> Okay guys, that is it for today's video of day three and day four of my classroom setup and decorating. It did not go as planned either day and I faced a lot of challenges, a lot of frustration, but that is okay because it's still early on and I do feel like I got something done and I'm in a better place, so that's okay. Tomorrow, all the teachers are back at school for a staff meeting in the morning. My principal thinks it's gonna be like three or four hours though, so that's gonna be crazy long. And then she's trying to give us a lot of time in the afternoon to set up our classrooms. If not, I will just stay into the evening as well and get a little bit done. But the good thing about that means that Saturday and Sunday are next and I can come in both of those days and do what I need to do. Um, I don't think I mentioned it yet, but our kids start on Tuesday. So we're doing a staggered start, which means half the kids come on Tuesday and Thursday and the other half come on Wednesday and Friday. And then everyone starts school together the following week, which I really, really like because it'll be fun to get to know the kids in like smaller groups. Anyway, I have school tomorrow, school on Monday, just teacher stuff, and then the kids on Tuesday. So we are definitely in crunch time, but I got a lot done today. <laughs> Thank you for sticking with me through all of my struggles. As always, if you have any advice or suggestions, make sure to leave them in the comments below because I really appreciate hearing from you, especially as I'm going through all of this. I know a lot of you are too, so we can support each other through it. Anyway, that is it for today's video. Thanks so much. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos and I will see you in my next one.